Okay, we should be recording now. Um, okay, hello everyone, and welcome to our community meeting. Today is January 7th, and my name is Ulim Vasilev, and I'm the Harbor Community Lead. Um, as it's official community meeting of CNCF project, please be nice to each other, and that boils down to, uh, yeah, just behave. Um, as Vadim already sharing the community meeting notes, I'm going to send that link into the chat so everyone can have it. And it would be super cool if you add yourself there. Um, add your topics and so on and so forth. So we, uh, we have Vadim, Florian and me, and I see some new faces, uh, like, sorry, mate, if I'm mispronouncing your name, but is harsh yeah hello um okay so uh, welcome to our chat what we have for today uh if you can say some few words about yourself uh why you join us and what you expect from that call and so on so we can then move on to our next stuff uh hello i'm harsh Goel. i am currently in my final year undergrad at uh, iit bhu india I'm pursuing in engineering and I am looking forward to uh, work with Harbor in LFX mentorship program. So just came here to know about uh, uh, Harbor and and uh, the and you guys and and more than that, uh, what is the project all about? Just uh, excited to be the member of the team. All right, welcome. So we have very low attendance today as you can see uh, but uh the main people that you're interested in are, are vadim and jan they're in the call so and me and myself so yeah welcome uh you know the uh, mentee application period hasn't ended yet um so we are still waiting some more attendees to to join and then we're gonna do the final sorting out of the mentees and Linux foundation is going to send the notifications to all the mentees selected, right? Yeah. So this is the process. Currently yep. the process is that we uh, have until the 13th of February time or the mentees have time until next week to apply. And then we have time to you know select and interview people and then make a decision until the 27th of february and then and at the 27th of february people will be then uh yeah assigned and uh nominated as mm -hmm. all right uh, uh, what we we have for today uh I'll, I'll post don't have much. both links here uh, for the mentorship program. Analytics. Uh, um, I have a few topics that... that I would like to discuss. Yeah, just be careful that you show all the mentees applied for this one. So. Yeah, maybe we don't have to disclose that information, but um, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, second. This one is open and this one is oh. okay, great. Um I have two topics that I would like to bring in for today. If nobody else has it, maybe uh if Floria would like to say something, if he has something. You can go first. Hi, uh, no, nothing special about the uh, 
provider. Uh, I'm uh, working on some uh, pull request uh, today, but uh, nothing special. Okay. Okay, good. Um, I have one thing to share. Yes. I think it's obvious, but uh, I'm not an employee of VMware anymore as of Monday. Um, but that will not, I hope it will not change anything um, in terms of my community lead role for now. Um, so yeah, just, just FYI, if I'm slow a little bit, I'm trying to get my <laughs> current life in order. So yeah, taking care of kids and not like hanging on on the computer the whole day. So that's that's a little bit changed. So I'll be most probably uh, slow in response. But uh, a part of that, I'm joining KubeCon as a as a community lead, and we're gonna do the kiosk as we discussed and the maintainers track and everything so i'm part yeah part of my employment nothing changed <laughs> so pretty much i'm going to continue the same thing without being paid it's interesting situation but <laughs> yeah so yes, yeah that was you, was that thank you thank you all the things that you, you, you did for your harbor yeah thank you yeah i i hope uh we can continue working on harbor together so we can yeah, yeah, make it even better. So yeah. I just want to share. It's not important, but it's like a thing. So yeah, cool. I'm sorry, Valim, uh, to interrupt with that. Well, that's uh, great to still have you with us. So you didn't do it for the money then, huh? <laughs> Definitely I did do it for the money. So. <laughs> uh. What is or yeah, whatever you 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 will consider about that. Yeah, only is is yeah, it's not paid by uh yeah yeah by us, but you are the boss. <laughs> only... <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Uh. So. Okay, we can continue. I think. Um. But in your stuff, and I think we then we have to discuss the maintainer track at some point. Oh yeah, that's good. We can discuss this. I have two topics that I would like to bring up. Um, one is the the email that that uh, we received yesterday, and I think this is this one. Yeah. So yesterday there was an email coming in that there is a new functionality available for the CNCF program. It's called NFX Insight version three, and it's basically a kind of a, a different or additional to the to the first insights possibility to put into projects. So this means that we could use this um, this tool from the CNCF and yeah, get better insights into projects and project adoption of Harbor. And we have already we are using already insights, but we are ready we are using the um, and the older version of insights, right? So not older version, but uh, there are two different tools there, right? And we yeah. are using one for the code quality. And I think this one is 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 based on a tool called crowd.dev. And this is more of you know something like how are people engaging in the like community engagement. And I think this would be definitely something very helpful for us to adapt and use, especially because it's because it comes you know for free uh, as part of the Linux Foundation. And yeah, and I think we will highly benefit from that. I think the only thing we need to do is here is just to apply for it, and that's it. Yeah, and then we'll um, get some more insights and, and yeah. By the way, um, that was like at some point the Linux Foundation de deprecated that that tool uh, for many of the projects, and now they're rolling it out to like on phases again. I think they reworked it somehow with the chaos orc. Um, so, uh, we can, we can definitely use that, um, on the background. I'm, I'm not showing that very often or not at all, because I'm not sure who is interested in this one. Uh, I'm using orbit and we have an account in orbit, uh, for the project orbit.love. Um, 
So it's one of the main tools for community management out there. It's providing similar um, information and I can, I'm can i following like who is active, who's not, um, new, new members joining in terms of people and organization, um, new PRs, like stuff like this so I can navigate through the community and, and, and offer help or ask for feedback. Um, yeah, but maybe we can, we can do, maybe we can do a, like a session, uh, dedicated with the community management in particular, uh, with this tool and, and orbit. So we can mm -hmm. see what kind of information we can get out of both of them and how we can use that. I mean, the, the instructions here are quite simple, right? So if we, if they would, if they should activate it for us, the only thing we need to do is, uh, just answer with a to proceed and they will they will activate it for us and that's it and then we can see the results on uh, the website here yeah and it's, it's, the only thing we have it to was do. sent to the maintainers right yes i can it see it was that. sent to the maintainers yes hmm. yeah do you mind if i respond back to daniel Brooke? go ahead yeah so if something pops up later on about community and how we can like tune that thing um to go through me not to take your time uh if if everybody's okay with this one i think yeah we should activate that yeah because uh we have nothing to to lose and only to gain right? yeah we will, uh, get as i said i'm like yeah I'm, I'm a bit slow with reading my mails now uh that's the reason why i i missed it it's like from yesterday yeah Okay, cool. Um, okay, add good. that to okay. the. I'm gonna add that to the to the agenda for today that we are mm -hmm. discussing right now. I have added to agenda. Oh. Did you? Oh yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, good. Um, mm -hmm. good. The next topic I have on the agenda is that I would like to discuss a topic that is well relevant for the project, and I, you know, popped up again into my mind because of the recent changes in Docker, and it's basically the fact that we are using. Photon OS as our base images and all our projects and code is Golang based. I mean, the, the binaries that we produce is Golang based, they're essentially compiled and there is no need to use any base image, right? So we could easily use a scratch image and this would then allow us to have, uh, yeah, have a smaller images, faster downloads, um, less vulnerabilities exposed, right? Because currently we are using curl and there are people every other week that people complaining about curl because there is a vulnerability there and or and this means that we will reduce our attack surface uh, and reduce the complexity of uh, the images and also increase the, the build time, right? So our builds will be much, much faster to, to, to compile. And I'm currently drafting a proposal that will basically propose to switch from Photon OS to uh, to Scratch images. And the reason why I came across this one again is the possibility, right? Like, what is the downside of Scratch images? And the only downside of Scratch images is if you want to debug something, right? So if you want to debug, it's not possible to jump into a container that easy. However, there is already a solution for for, for Kubernetes. So if you're in a Kubernetes environment, there are debug containers. And now since Docker has also this, this capability, there is also the possibility to do the same thing with Docker, which is called, uh, I think, Docker debug container. Yeah. So there is also, uh, uh, there is some functionality, or it may be, maybe it's already there. 
uh, it's option to debug a container, right? So this means that your binary will then spin up in another container that has all the tooling that you need, like Vim, Nano, uh, Curl, and, and so on, right? And uh, at a proper shell. So, so there is basically no need to uh, uh, to use anything else than a scratch image. And I will make a proposal for that. I'm currently writing it. I'll submit it, and I think we should vote and 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 do the switch. So it will solve quite a few problems for us, and also reduce headache for chasing uh, chasing fixes and patches, especially in older versions of Harbor that we all don't currently do. So if there are questions or objections or something that they should take care in the proposal drafting. Uh, let me know. Uh, but uh, um, before we yeah, yeah talking about the the proposal to replace the photons, I can give you some background why we choose to use photon OS because that uh, from the perspective of uh, security, uh, you know that uh, we do have a lot of uh, uh, dependencies and tools libraries and uh, as well as uh, base OS and. Um, because uh, we are maintaining a good relationship with the Photon team, and uh, they could help us to re um, resolve any security problem during uh, the, the, the development phase or, or even the uh, patch uh, tendency. And uh, so that's why we can uh, respond to the community um, um, as soon as possible from uh, engineering team to to release the patch a fix to the CV problem because that the the photon team have asked to to do it to do this so um this is why we choose to use the photon OS yeah um, um so so the biggest concern that I have here is that uh, how can we handle the the security problem if we do not choose to use uh, uh, um a base OS like a photo and uh, so um yeah because that a lot of you know that a lot of users are using harbor in their uh, um company and no matter inside or outside products so they re really care about the security problem right and they want us to uh up to date to to uh fix all the things like in mm. engines, libcur, yeah, yeah, the clib, yeah, yeah, a lot of the libraries. So, um, yeah, but yeah, the the thing is that the scratch image is not the base image, so it's not a it's not an OS. It has no yeah yeah yeah. There's no vulnerabilities, right? But so eventually, the yeah, only yeah. Yes. vulnerabilities we will have is in our application. Because you know our application can run run from scratch, and uh, we don't need any third party dependencies, so we don't need a base OS or base uh, images. You know, like we can we can statically compile our application that we currently already do, and run it from yeah. scratch, and so there is no dependency from who whoever there is, right? So we're not depending on Photon uh, because there is no need to be dependent on Photon. Um, I have a question. So what eventually, you... we had to deal with the the, the binary like uh, release, yeah, post Christ, yeah. Like recently, we received a lot of CVE on the release, but if we choose to uh, use the scratch, we have to wait for the release to provide any fix. Okay. And okay. Uh, so... yeah, yeah, and we're not sure the the, the yeah, the yeah. Mystery there about is... that. So, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So what what we can I see the point right so we have a few images that that uh, basically might need uh, a, a base operating system for example Redis or Postgres I'm not sure if there is an option for Postgres Scratch or Postgres or Redis Scratch um, we might need to deviate then in this use case so like don't use Scratch images for Redis or Postgres. But for the majority of the images, like for our applications, we can surely switch to Scratch and, uh, you know, 
and use that approach. But I'll I'll check again. I did check all the images, yeah. only the, the the base the, the core images that we have. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm pretty sure that we can have Redis from scratch, and I think we can also have Postgres from scratch. But I'll check check that concern and add this into my proposal to identify the images that cannot run from scratch. Um, but sure. can I join you in this one? I find this oh. very interesting, and uh, I think we had to do that a long time ago. Um, and one follow up question: What's do you know in terms of like footprint? What's the difference between Scratch and Distroless, and which one is the better choice? Have you have you tested Distroless? Um, yeah, I mean, Scratch is basically. Uh, I mean, if you can go with Scratch, you should go with Scratch because it's it has no dependencies, right? Scratch is a is an empty image. It's just an empty layer, right? And the only thing that we have inside is the application. And yep. Distroless is uh, provides you some, with some more options, right? So I think like Distroless Postgres is easier to realize with Distroless Postgres than with Scratch Postgres. Um, so I think there's not all applications are running can run from scratch and for those that cannot run from scratch um it it uh, this tool is an option um yeah we we did uh, some investigation on the digital uh several years ago um, but we found some uh, problem uh, on the security so we have some security concern so that's why we do not continue invest on that. I I, I forgot about some details, but, but you you can you can search distributors in the GitHub. I mean the Go Harbor issues. Yeah. Uh, probably okay. we, we add some comments on this. Yeah yeah yeah. We 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 file a issue and in the Go Harbor regarding the to uh, the, the distributors. But, but yeah. You can search the text release in the, in the issue or attack yeah. issues. Um, yes, um, the, the second one um, uh, should be the, the investigation. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we, we did some work on this, but, but yeah, I can, I can talk uh with team uh, uh about uh, why we didn't choose digital list, digital list at the best aim yeah, yeah. so um yeah. i i forgot about that some details sorry yeah yeah so the thing is that this tool list has a few uh, a few more options right so this is the the, the, main, the major difference right so that's uh that's why uh it has a surface area and then Scratch has no surface area, right? And I think what, what we can do is we can see if we can um, use distroless. I will I will put that into my proposal, distroless and also Scratch mm -hmm. and also how how to deal with the uh, with the images that we currently distribute that is like Redis and Postgres and Nginx, like those three images uh, are applications that we distribute that are not built from Golang. And those might need to have an operating system. And this operating system can either be distroless or it can be con or, or it can continue to be photonized. Right? So I think uh, it can be both options are possible here. Yeah. So okay. because that we okay. do not have any relationship yeah, yeah, with the digital team. So eventually we have to do yeah. the, handle the CVE. So from the perspective of OS. So so that's why we choose. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, that's why we choose yeah. uh, the as, as the base. Yeah, yeah. That's the background. Um, yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, yes. We can continue to discuss in your proposal. In your proposal. All right. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. There's also both the uh, OS. There's also, right? There's also... Uh, kind of distroless, mm -hmm. distroless image, image uh, thingy. Yep. Uh, you yep. can. I'll I'll put that also uh, in my. 
in my proposal. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, but but hi, William. Um, I I I don't think it is a high priority task for us to replace the base image, right? Base OS and. Uh, I think uh, um so uh to have a uh, harbor on arm should be more important than than this one right but here comes the trick uh, <laughs> if, if we have distroless images right yeah it yeah. will be much much easier to support arm mhm mm mhm mm mhm mm mhm and yeah. This so is also probably my, can, uh, my reason to push distress, yeah. uh, not distress, scratch images. I, I I got you. I got you. So yeah, we can uh, discuss on the proposal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, Oli, you can uh, continue with the preparation for KubeCon. I'm I'm done with the topic. I'm just making some notes here, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, Jan, do you know from your side who is going to attend? Do you, do you have that um, clear yet? Yeah, I'm still uh, waiting for the response from the leadership team. Yeah, so, so far, uh, no update. But it's still 50 50. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I understand. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. We still have the, time. The, the, to, yeah. We still mm -hmm. have time to shuffle yeah. up a little bit the the speakers. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. so yeah, it's all right. And yeah. Um something but, uh yeah, but you but and Odin maybe will join. Yeah, right. All right. Yeah. yeah, I have tickets so, already. Mm -hmm. Just yep. And uh, we can have, we still can have uh, to prepare the demos and slides, even we do, do not have a chance to come. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that would be great. Um, yeah. I'm going to talk on my local meetup uh, about Harbor with a colleague, ex colleague mm -hmm. of mine. Uh, it's 22nd. Yeah. We're going to talk about the, the cosine and notation and the admission mm -hmm. controller within kubernetes and like we're going to talk around signing images and yeah. was the the actual need for sending images and stuff like this so once we have something actually running and like a demo i'll share that with you not sure in what, yeah. what kind of language we're going to do that is it going to be in bulgarian or, or english but yeah we'll see just just fyi yeah. Um, so if you have some uh, the, uh, slides or, or, or Wikipedia, you can share with us. Yep. Nice. All right. Thank you. Um, Gloria and, and Thomas are extremely quiet today, but I have a question for you folks. Um, are you planning to join KubeCon or? Uh, yes. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Go Thomas, ahead. no. Florian, yes. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Right. And yeah, my idea. You're, you're it's almost a crop, uh, close to your door. There it is. It is around the corner. Yeah, oh. it's in Paris. Yes, it's not so far. Yeah. And I lived in Paris until this uh, this summer, but not anymore. So <laughs> that's why <laughs> I don't go. I, I prefer to go to a CubeCon uh, far away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, why are you in France now? Or are you still in France or you moved somewhere else? Yeah, I'm in the south of France, near Toulouse, mm. in southwest of France. Which is not even close to to Paris. Well, I, 
Uh, I am about uh, 500 or 600 kilometers, I think. Yeah, it's great. It's it's not close. <laughs> all right. Yeah, not really. <laughs> no. All right. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking if it's about like getting a ticket or something or convincing your employer or something to figure mm -hmm. out a way. But yeah, if if you if you if you feel like um not going because of the uh it's in 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 in, in France, yeah, I understand that. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next year, maybe I will. I will join Capcom. Nice. All right. I'm. I'm just trying to figure out who's going to be there, so we can do something like um, get together or something. Um, so we can have some fun and drinks. <laughs> I don't have a budget anymore, but I think we can organize drinks. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, right. I will try my best. <laughs> yeah, I bet in you, Jan. I bet in you. No, thank you. Um, I've added two, uh, one more, more update. Uh, I've uploaded the KubeCon uh, keynote update uh, for the video already. So it should be in the making on the CNCF site. So we're going to be on Q on keynote stage again i hope that will have good impact last minute change on their side was they're going to put the keynote updates at the end of the conference not in the beginning as always so my okay. message <laughs> so my message hey visit us at the kiosk or come to our maintenance track is going to be very stupid because that will be all gone but yeah, yeah who, who knew? on the last day of the kubecon <laughs> That was that was the last update I got that the keynote updates for the protocol will be on the last day, which is incredible. You ask me. Yeah. Okay, that I shouldn't say okay. that in recording, but uh, I find that <laughs> like, I, I I find that super bizarre. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe they will change their mind and and put it on in the beginning as always, so it can be more usable by people. But yeah, you never know. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holly. Thank you for yeah. recording us. Hey, Thomas, you have a ticket here. Yeah, I added uh, one point. Uh, I found out that uh, this issue uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, I, I don't know if you are familiar with it. It's about Redis cache. Uh, yeah, yeah. Having some miss. Yeah, um, there is already one. Okay, I'm not aware of it, um, and I wanted to discuss it uh, with you because on our side we are about to to use the Redis cache for our customers. So I would have your feedback if any of you is already using it in production. If you already see those those kind of issues. Um. Yeah, there seems to be a seems to be a problem with the Redis cache, but this it's generally um I'm not sure if this is the Redis cache enabled or if it's just the Redis the, the general Redis cache that we have. Uh, because they're talking about uh replication something, right? I don't know it's uh Um, I'm not sure if this is, a, you know, there are two caching functionalities in, in Harbor. One is kind of the explicit cache that you can enable and disable. And the other one, which is the implicit one, which is always there, right? This, this one you cannot disable. Yeah, they are yeah. talking about the, the cache um, in the distribution. So, um, oh, it's not a um, yeah. manifest cache from Arbor. Yeah, so um, if you see the response of uh, Alex, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, yeah, can you screw down a little bit? Sorry, screw down a, a little bit, and uh, 
Yes, this one. So this is actually the the, the cache of distribution. Yeah. So um. Uh, so I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I need time to to dig into the problem to see what happened. I I actually this is the first time that I see this problem. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. So I think I saw another issue yeah. with where this cache. Um. Uh, yeah. So how much how much you 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 have the same problem in your side, right? Um, no, 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 no. We don't have the problem for for now. We don't use the Redis cache that you can enable or disable for manifest, uh, and we would like to use it to to use it in production. But at first, I wanted to be sure that it's not uh, that we will not have an issue with it uh, on okay. customers uh, using okay. it uh, a lot. Yeah, I got it. So, uh, you mean the cache feature in the harbor, or or you wanna? Yeah, in Arbor, yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you are talking about the the cache feature in your harbor side, uh, yeah, the this problem will not impact. Okay. Because that uh, there are two different things. Yeah. Okay. The, the cache, um, yeah, the cache feature in the, the cache layer. In harbor side, we just uh, leverage Redis to cache and manifest to reduce the the DB connection core and uh, to save some uh, um, IO from harbor core to DB and uh, it's especially on the uh, high uh, concurrency pooling scenarios. So yeah, yeah, and we have a wiki page to compare um, both enable or, or disable cache. Yeah, I saw it. On, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it could be benefit for 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 you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I know a lot of uh, company has already enabled this feature to save a uh, cost. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Where where do you see? Oh, yeah, it's it's a. Where do we see that that this is the the Docker Docker cache, like the registry cache? Because the, uh, the prefix they're using, the prefix they are using to to search and the, the blah blah um uh h h get or on the this one. No no, I'm I mean the response from Alex uh the the next one. Yes, um, uh, the output is the key. But yeah, this key is uh, the uh, right by the distrib distribution. And, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so, um, but, but it's, yeah, it's weird that the, the size is zero. I'm, I don't know what happened. Yeah. So, Yeah, so the like the here's the investigation, right? So they say that it's because of the proxy somehow. Yeah. Yeah, okay, but I just okay. Uh, what's what's weird is it, it it's uh it's like it happens only from our more two dot eight version. He said. I don't mm -hmm. know if we. Upgraded the Docker distribution in this version. What why is the problem would occur specifically on this version? I don't know if we had the issue before. Hmm. That's why I, I thought it was about the, the ready cache, cache layer feature because of the version, but maybe it's just a coincidence. I don't know. Okay, I'll I'll ask the question, and I think maybe we can transfer this issue to Docker distribution if it's a Docker distribution issue, right? And uh, see if uh, we can address it there. Okay. 
Oui, thank you. Okay. Do we have anything else? No, huh? I don't think so. Um, maybe one last topic about the operator. Uh, mm -hmm. So last time we talked about uh, archive it. Uh, I don't know if we, if someone had, had time to look at it. It is on my plate to send out the message, but I didn't do it as I okay. explained earlier. But uh, it's on my plan for today <laughs> to tweet about and write into the message into the mailing list. Okay, so yeah, well, yeah it was we late can, today, uh, so yeah, maybe we can postpone this message because uh, we can. Uh... Let's see. We can have some uh, uh, maintainers from uh, Kubicon, yeah, to to see if have someone has interest on this repository yeah, to not? have us maintainers. Maybe we can uh, send out a message during the maintainer track session to let the community knows that we are seeking for help to maintain the operator. Um, I think, yeah. I mean, we don't have to uh, we don't have to archive it immediately, right? So it will be a process of let's say a few few weeks and months, and I think we can already ask the people in the community, like, hey, we're thinking about we're thinking about archiving it. Um, yes. Because there are lots of people like, and then we can repeat the same process again at the KubeCon, right? To increase mm -hmm. the chance that yep. people will respond. And. Uh... And we need to ha reserve a time slot for the people who is using operator, and uh, maybe they need to figure out how to migrate their uh, harbor to maybe Hamchar. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there should be a, a a a a time for them to decide they have to migrate harbor to another kind of media time because that operator. Will, we will be deprecated. Yeah, yeah, um, mm -hmm. we we won't like shoot. Hey, by the way, we are deprecating or archiving operator. End of story. Uh, it's gonna be a call for action. If someone wants to, uh, take a role in it and then continue maintaining it, and we can raise that once again on KubeCon, like in the broader audience. Um, and then after KubeCon, we can, if nobody shows up, then we can. Practically archive it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, banned also. Also, I'm going to open that to maybe we can address that also to CNCF, but I'm not sure if we have to use that channel to find maintainers. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I cannot say how much of importance is the operator to the project. So I cannot say how much we have to push to find new maintainers. I'm not I'm not mm. sure how many users is using hub operator. So uh, I I can't know yeah the impact. Yeah. Yeah that's yeah the same. Okay. So all right. Um I'm gonna I'm going to send a message out today or tomorrow and see what will be the uh, the result. Great. All right. Yep. All right. Hello. Okay, everyone. We can hear you. Yeah, okay. All right. Thanks. Is that so everything? That. Yeah. Thank you and have a great day, everyone. Bye. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.